Honourable Member for Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On October 6, this government introduced a flawed bill in the House of Commons, Bill C-26. They did so fully aware of the bill's shortcomings. They did so with full knowledge that women and people with living, people living with disabilities would be negatively affected. That the bill omitted dropout provisions already in the Canada Pension Plan to protect women and people living with disabilities seemed to matter very little. Getting a deal done quickly, the PR and the photo op were more important. Looking good was more important. Sadly, looking good is more important to this government than sound public policy that protects the rights and needs of all Canadians. Madam Speaker, removing the dropout provision from the CPP was a surprise to many experts who have been working on a pension reform for many years. While testifying at committee, I asked Mark Johnson, Jansen, a pension expert from QP National, if he or his union had any indication that the child rearing or disability dropouts were on the table for CPP expansion. In reply, Mr. Jansen said, quote, it was a surprise to us to see that they were not included. The signed document the finance ministers put out in June and the backgrounder they produced at the time said nothing about this. So it was only when we saw the legislation. During the years of talks, we had not heard that this was an item to be discussed and perhaps changed." Unquote. When I asked Mr. Hassan Youssef, President of the Canadian Labour Congress, about the government's plan to omit the dropout provisions, he was very straightforward. He said, quote, the committee has a direct responsibility to amend the bill to fix the problem. This is an affront to women's equality in this country, and it is simply wrong. It was corrected in 1977, and we have no business going back and taking that away from women and people who get disability benefits. However, the department came up with a draft. They made a fundamental mistake. In my view, and it needs to be fixed, this committee has the responsibility to fix that. More than half the workforce today is represented by women. To tell them that they are not going to be treated equally as men in the workforce is wrong, and this committee has a responsibility. Equality, the department, equally, the department should come back to say that they made a mistake. This will do very little, I think, in terms of the premium increase. It dis disadvantaged two very important groups in this country, and in my view, it was never discussed during the enhancement. It's fundamentally wrong, and given that the government has said about women's equality, I don't think this, this was intended. It needs to be fixed." Unquote. It did not take the NDP long to discover the flaws. At first, we wondered if the omission of these critical provision, provisions was an oversight or done on purpose. How could the government leave out provisions designed to protect the well-being of a, such a large number of Canadians? How could the government leave out provisions originally put into the CPP by the Prime Minister's father after he discovered a major hole in the legislation? We thought for sure the, the admission had to be a mistake. But we have come to find out it was no mistake at all. We have learned that in the haste to get a deal done with the provinces in June, this government was willing to throw the rights of women and those living with disabilities under the bus. It was a shameful move, and now they have been exposed. The government should feel ashamed and fix the bill. I know that many on the other side of this House realize the government made a mistake. I watched them look down and squirm uncomfortable at any time we raised the deceit in this House or at committee. But even when they have been exposed and their mistakes laid bare, the government and all their members still refused to commit to fixing the bill. Many, many times my colleagues and I have stood in this House and asked if the government would fix their flawed bill. For days on end, all we got back was disdain and non-answers. Not one member on the other side of this House would even admit their bill would trample on the rights of all the rural Canadians. We were, challenged, we were challenged to take our concerns to committee. So we did, Madam Speaker. The, MPT, the NDP studied the bill and we figured out how to fix it. We developed the language and the clauses needed to, to, to the bill to fix the government's mistake. In good faith, we went to committee. We listened to the witnesses, some who were supportive who supported the bill and some not so much. Many witnesses recognized the flaw in the legislation and urged the committee to, drop, to put the dropout provisions into the bill. During the clause 
the clause by clause consideration of the bill, I presented amendments to fix the legislation. My two amendments were all that were needed to put this dropout provisions back into the bill. Two amendments, Madam Speaker, which would restore the protection for women and those living with disabilities. However, my amendments were ruled out of order. Now, the only way to fix the bill would, have, would be to have to come back to the House and have the Minister make the appropriate amendments at that time. So I moved the motion to have the committee consider making these recommendations to the House of Commons. What happened next, Madam Speaker, was shocking and disheartening. The Liberal members on the committee resorted to the lowest form of procedural maneuvering and moved and passed the motion to adjourn debate. That meant a motion to consider fixing the bill couldn't even be debated or discussed, never mind actually voted on. I couldn't believe it. It was clear a heavy-handed whip had been used. So much for the government of, of steady ways, free votes, and the best intentions. It's clear that Canadians who have voted for change are receiving nothing but chump change. A few days later, I was able to bring my motion back to the committee. And again, Madam Speaker, the Liberal members of the committee proved very clearly they were not serious about fixing the bill. Instead of even debating my motion, they, need, they used another procedural maneuver which guaranteed no immediate fix for the bill. It was shameful and disappointing. Madam Speaker, I have mentioned what happened at committee because I want Canadians to know, and I want my constituents to know, that things don't always hear, happen here in Ottawa the way you think they should. This government had a very easy way of fixing a major flaw in a bill they introduced, a flaw that could affect 14 million Canadian workers, and they chose not to. Madam Speaker, we in the NDP find ourselves in an awkward position. We plan on supporting the bill, but are very concerned about whether the CPP will ever be fixed and the necessary dropout provisions included in the legislation. So far, we have heard from the President of, of the Treasury Board who said, we are aware that more could be done in respect of the dropout provisions for disability and child rearing. And in fact, the Minister of Finance will raise these provisions at the next meeting of the provincial and territory finance ministers in December in the context of a triannual review of the CPP. And from the parliamentary secretary to the minister of finance who said, our intent is to pass the bill as is. However, the finance minister will then raise the dropout provisions at the next provincial and territory finance ministers meeting in December in the context of the triannual review of the Canada Pension Plan. In my view, these are both pretty weak, non-committal statements. And, Madam Speaker, we have heard nothing from the Minister of Finance himself. Is he committed to fixing the legislation? Is he committed to making sure that women and those living with disabilities are not victimized with a mistake in Bill C-26? No one knows for sure. I am not optimistic. I will believe it when I see it. Thank you, Madam Speaker.